Hi, I'm Glenn. Thank you for taking a look at my teaching practice in the School of Art at Long Beach State. I've been teaching Art 110 Introduction to the Visual Arts for 17 years now and an Art 490 workshop in artists' careers, portfolios, and websites for six years now. Uh, in Art 110, I've had 54 sections uh, teaching 5,644 Long Beach State students and in the workshop on careers, portfolios, and websites, I've taught 17 sections for 289 graduating School of Art seniors. When I started teaching the workshop, it wasn't really careers, uh, it was more, let's make a portfolio website. And in the very beginning, six years ago, I thought that platforms were a big deal and that we should spend a couple weeks trying Wix and spend a couple weeks trying Squarespace and figure out what worked best for students. I quickly learned that the platform isn't that important, they're not all that different, uh, and that that's the easy part. Actually putting stuff on a website, it might have a challenge here or there, but it's the relatively easy part. Figuring out what your career is and what your portfolio should be to realize that career, that's the tough part. Um, from these 289 graduating SOA seniors, I have learned that the majority, the, the large majority, would like an art career if they can make that happen. Uh, the majority are not really sure what that career should be. Maybe uh, they should be trying to show their ceramic work in a gallery. Maybe they should get a certificate and uh, a, a teaching credential and be teaching K through 12. But then there's also that great uh, internship at the Broad to learn to be a museum preparator. And oh, by the way, I've kind of dabbled in graphic design and maybe that. Uh, so it's not unusual for a, a student to have four great careers, but they're trying in many cases to pursue all four at the same time. I've come to believe that pursuing four or even three or even two different art careers at the same time increases the chances that you will end up with no art career. And honestly, an awful lot of my uh, passion for teaching this course is from my depressing visits to LinkedIn. Uh, when I go, I will see, I don't go there that often, but when I go to LinkedIn, it's, it's very common to see an artist friend or a former student, maybe someone who I thought was really a terrific film composer or someone who I thought was a, an excellent photographer of, of live events. And now they're posting on LinkedIn about the management consulting company that they work for and that if their clients are going to be at the big convention in Denver, that they hope you'll come up to their hospitality suite because they'd really like to buy you a drink and show you the new set of productivity tools that they're offering. Um, if a student wants an, a business career, that's great. Not everybody needs to be an artist. But if a student wants an art career and doesn't have one because they're not sure what it ought to be or how to get started or just don't have a clue on how to make that happen, that's really disappointing. And so I think my mission in this, this workshop is to try to avoid that for anybody who would like to have an art career, to try to empower them both to figure out what that career that they want is and what portfolio they need to assemble to make that career happen and then how to network and get out into the world to produce that. So we've really evolved to include more and more uh, professional practices. And I've also learned that an awful lot of our graduating seniors uh, have never had a professional practices class or even a module in some other course on professional practices. So there's a lot to cover, um, starting, as I said, with what is it, what career is it that you want? Um, and they, it's not unusual to have four different things, all of which are great choices, but doing them, trying to present them at the same time produces a kind of a too many balls in the air, deer in the headlights uh, scenario where it's hard for me, emerging artist, to communicate to someone who I'd like to professionally connect with, uh, a curator at a gallery, an HR director at an animation studio, a creative director at an ad agency, a design shop, an art buyer at a children's book publisher, any of these many people that you want to connect with. It's hard to connect when you're telling them six different things at once. Even worse, it's hard to know for yourself what you do. When you say that you're willing to put three things on the shelf, not abandon them forever, but put them on the shelf for now and have a focus, 
uh, I think the student now, or the, let's not even call them students anymore, let's say young professional, emerging artists, they have a, a much better ability to focus and do the things they need to do to make that happen. In many, many cases, when students finally do decide this is what I want my career to be, this is the, the field I'd like to pursue, they don't have portfolio materials for that. It's very common for a student to tell me uh, that was never a class assignment, which the first time I heard that I was pretty depressed. <laughs> like, wait, you didn't pursue the thing, you didn't pursue your life's dream because no instructor ever told you to do that? Um, uh, and then I just came to understand that there are a lot of skills and concepts and ideas and aesthetics that we explore during a short time in the School of Art. Uh, and hopefully they've developed a lot of ability, a lot of thinking, but they may not have made a lot of pieces for the portfolio they want. So part of the class has become, in addition to a weekly, um, what we're going to do this week, photograph your work, write about yourself, the many elements that they need for a portfolio. Uh, there's also every week make new work. And it's not work that Glenn thinks you should make. It's work that you, the student, want to make to have the portfolio that you want, the portfolio that you need to pursue the career and make the connections that you want. Um, I have also learned, interestingly, that Zoom can be great for these situations. Uh, the face-to-face -face workshop was okay. When we went on Zoom, students were not thrilled. I think the freshmen, like in the Art 110 class, the freshmen were, were most disappointed. They were really sad about missing the college experience. Uh, but seniors were not entirely engaged either. I think Zoom, there's a lot to say about Zoom. I won't take your time to say that now, uh, but I've thought about it a lot. Uh, Zoom for a 100 student class is challenging. Even a 20 student class to really get people to feel presence and engagement is challenging. But what Zoom is amazing for is what I've mostly moved the class to be, one-to-one uh, -one conversations. So the structure as we have it now is just a very brief 45 minutes on Monday to talk about what we're going to do this week, make sure everyone's on the same page, answer any questions. It's, 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 it's brief and, and functional. And then to have a series of one-to-one -one conversations, uh, which will often go an hour, and we really work through all of these career options spinning around in their brain and try to help them focus on what they'd most like to pursue and then help them pursue that. What are some professional groups you could look at, some you know, conferences, talks, things you could get info at? How can you reach out and connect professionals, get information, start to build the, the branches and the roots of your professional tree? So Zoom has been better than the face-to-face -face group was for that. It's definitely, Zoom one-to-one -one is definitely better than Zoom one-to-many. And honestly, I think Zoom one-to-one -one has a lot of strength beyond even what one-to-one face-to-face would be. Um, we're really able to go deep into their career scenario, use the web to look at things they've written, uh, to look at opportunities, other people's portfolios, uh, conferences, talks, things they can do. So I've really been pleased at how Zoom, challenging with larger classes, but really powerful to help students one-to-one. -one. Anyway, that's a, a relatively quick uh, look at what I've been up to. I hope that's helpful. Thank you again for taking a look at my teaching in the School of Art at Long Beach State.